What is up guys? Today we are in my kitchen and we're going to be baking slash cooking um, rice pudding today. I don't do a lot of cooking videos on my channel. I'm going to start doing more. Uh, I think my sighted viewers would really benefit from seeing how blind people cook because sighted folk have this misconception that if if you take away their eyes they can't do anything and that's just not the case at all. So. Uh, cooking I think is one area of life that I feel like I could really start expanding on on my channel so uh, yeah today we're making rice pudding it's one, one of my favorite things to eat simple um, prep time is minimal cook time is minimal it's very hands-off so it's a pretty simple recipe uh, except for the fact that I don't have measuring cups I, I, do, I do a lot of eyeballing pun intended when I make this recipe so Sometimes it, it turns out a little bit differently than other times, but it's always edible, which is all I care about. So first thing I'm going to do, so this is exhibit A, this is a coffee cup I'm using as a measuring cup. So I'm going to add two cups of water to this pot. Okay, so I'm going to use this cup again, so I'm, just, I'm not going to put it away. Clear my stove top off here. So one thing that blind people ought to do when they're cooking on their stove is always make sure the handle of the stove of the pot is facing in, so you don't accidentally knock the handle when you're actually when you're working on the counter, which can in turn knock the pot off the element. So I'm just gonna turn this handle in like this. So I'm gonna boil when I find the lid to this pot. I'm gonna boil this water. So I'm gonna turn my element onto high to boil. So leave that for a second to do its thing. I'm gonna dry out, dry this cup because I'm gonna be measuring rice and I don't want the rice to stick to the bottom of the cup because the cup is still wet. So I'm using the same cup that I used to pour the water. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm going to, when the water is boiling, I'm going to add a cup of rice to the water and then I'm gonna turn it down to really low heat and just let it simmer for as long as it takes to get not, for the rice to get nice and soft. So usually around 20, 25 minutes. So we have our big bag of rice right here. I'm going to level it off. We got a nice cup right here. Pretty much to the top. Oops, some on the side of the cup there. Okay, so while the boiling water is boiling, or while the water is getting ready to boil, we can pre-prepare um, the, the rest of our, our ingredients. So, again, I don't have measuring cups, so we're going to use this little tin glass. I like this glass. It's one of Colleen's glasses. I really like this for drinking Baileys out of, <laughs> or any form of liqueur. It's a nice big glass so you can get a good amount of tasty alcohol. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so we are going to add... So this is how simple this recipe is. Sh sugar, eggs, milk. That's it. Sugar, eggs, and milk. So we are going to we'll get everything out and then we'll just put everything in together. So we have our milk, 1% milk, white sugar, and eggs right here. So it's going to make some room on my countertop here. This is our bowl. So this is the bowl we're going to be cooking things, that, uh, we're going to be baking the rice in after it's boiled. and. Simmered for 
as long as it takes to get nice and soft. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use, um, how many eggs are we going to do? We're, we're, we're going to use three eggs today. So basically I crack the egg hard on the side of the bowl and then crack it into the bowl, making sure to not drop any eggshell. Nobody wants eggshell in their rice pudding. There we go, there's three eggs in there. Close this over, wash my hands off. Put the eggs back. I like to put things away as I'm cooking. Just It just makes it easier to clean up. So I'm gonna get a fork and just beat these eggs up. So when I'm doing this, I put my other hand over top of the bowl just to minimize any backsplash. So basically I'm just like trying to flatten the eggs out so they're all, it's just one nice runny pile of egg. You guys can hear the pot but it one way I can tell that water is boiling is that the lid begins to vibrate on the pot or water will bubble over and it'll hit the almond and it'll make a hissing sound a or B work <laughs> okay what did I do with that with that fork there it is right here so we're getting pretty close actually to the, yep, there it is right there. So I'm gonna turn the water down to low. I'm going to add the rice. I'm going to give it a stir if I can find my fork. I'm gonna put the lid on and we're gonna make sure it's nice and low. And we're just gonna leave that for as long as it takes. I'll check it after 20 minutes. Um, the goal is to have nice, soft rice. We can add a bit more than that. That's, that's like not a full glass. Hmm. How much is this? Uh, no, we can add a bit more than that. How are we doing here? Jeez, you think I'd be better at doing this by, by now, eh? Nah, that's a bit too much actually. Yeah, there we go. Pour the glass into the egg bowl put the milk away so I'm gonna dry this glass that I just used so that when I add sugar to it it doesn't stick to the bottom of the glass and get all gross so yeah there's a fair bit of sugar in this but it's it's a dessert rice pudding is a dessert so All dessert should have bad things in it. <laughs> I guess I should have set a timer for this rice, but uh, that's okay. I'll wing it. Okay, so now we're just gonna pour 
our sugar into this glass. So again, we're gonna, the recipe calls for half a cup of sugar. Um, now half a cup of sugar in a baking measuring cup is like next to nothing. So I don't even know if, if they refer to a cup as the cup that you use to measure the rice or the cup that you use to bake with. So there are a lot of unknowns with this recipe. <laughs> We like to make it up as we go along. Okay. I'd rather have too much sugar than not enough sugar. Perfect, right there. Level that off. Okay. We're getting low on sugar. We just have to make sure that we need, we don't run out. That'd be bad. So, going to add sugar to the eggs and milk. Now, if I had vanilla extract, I would add that. If I had nutmeg, I would add that. So now I'm going to take the fork and I'm going to stir this. Again, being careful not to have any splashback. It's hard to do because this bowl is pretty full. So basically, for those of you who want to skip ahead, what's going to happen is when the rice is done, I'm going to pour the rice into this bowl, mix it up, make sure it's well distributed, well mixed in with the ingredients that I've just put together. And then I'm going to bake it for about half an hour in my oven. So I'm going to pause the video here. And when the rice is ready to, to go, we'll be back and we'll uh, I'll show you guys uh, the pouring into this mixing bowl and the baking and all that fun stuff Okay guys, welcome back to phase two of our operation The rice is good to go. I have preheated the oven to around 325 So for those of you who can't see That would be around I'm guessing five o'clock on your uh, dial Give or take um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the rice, which is nice and soft. There's actually a lot of rice here. I don't know if I'll use all of this. I might keep some of this for just, and just have it during the day. Um, I'm going to transfer the rice into our bowl that has our eggs, milk, and sugar. And I have a spatula. So I'm, I have a dish drying towel laid out on the counter. So I'm just gonna put the pot of rice on the dish towel. And, and I'm just gonna ladle the rice into the pot, uh, bowl. And after a couple of ladles, I'll get out the old trusty fork and stir. This rice is pretty hot, I'm not going to lie. Okay, let's get our fork out here. We're just going to mix things around. So yeah, you basically want to just stir the rice into the mixture. Put the fork back in the sink. So I love to just put utensils in the sink as I'm using them. It's just they're easy to grab and they're not making a mess on the counter by dripping all over the place. So another big ladle of rice. Maybe we will end up using all of this. The bowl that I'm using to cook this in isn't as big as I thought it was. So I wasn't sure if I would be able to get all the rice in here, but I'm thinking I might be able to. If there's less rice, it just means there's gonna be more sweetness. So, which is never a bad thing. 
So I'm doing this all by feel. I am totally, well, that's not exactly true. I have light perception. I can see, um, like if the sun was out, I could see the sun out. If I go into a room and there's a light on, I can see the light. My vision has deteriorated over the years. We can put more rice in here. We might actually get the whole, the whole uh, cup of rice in here. You don't want to jam as much rice in here as possible. You definitely want it to have like a, uh, like a runny-ish texture because the, when it goes in the oven, the rice is going to absorb the milk, eggs and sugar. But we can definitely put more in here. Maybe all of the cup actually that I originally thought we wouldn't be able to. Which means I'll have to come up with something else for lunch, but maybe I'll just eat rice pudding for lunch. Nope, nothing wrong with that. Okay, I think we're, we're gonna stop here. There's a lot of rice. There's not too much rice left. So again, my oven is set for 325. You're gonna cook this for, I don't know, minimum half an hour. Basically, one way of testing to see if it's done or not is you stick your fork in it, and if it comes out without rice all over it, you're good to go. If it's kind of runny and it hasn't congealed, you want to put it in a bit, leave it in a bit longer. There's a lot of rice here. Our bowl's pretty full. Yeah, we're gonna stop here. We're not gonna add any more. Geez, somebody is really trying to get a hold of me right now. My phone is buzzing and beeping away. Okay, so this is what it looks like pre-oven. For those of you who can see, for those of you who can't, it's just a bowl of rice with stuff in it. Here, there's some excess rice on the, on the counter, which I'll just drop into the bowl as well. Okay, rinse my hands off here. So yeah, I'm gonna put this in. Um, again, we're looking at 30 minutes minimum. Make sure the dial is where I want it. It is. Like that, right? Push it in a little further, right there. You might be able to hear like little hissing sounds. The bottom of the bowl was a little wet. So and there it goes. Now I don't use oven mitts for this. It's just, so the sighted folk watching this are pro probably thinking I'm burning my hands off, but I'm not. Um, I've just been around ovens long enough to kind of gauge where I am. As far as the, the grill trays go and it's just, it's just a trial uh, practice makes perfect type of thing. Okay, so yeah, there's a little bit of rice left here, which I'll just leave on the stove. I'll have that for, for lunch today. Not much rice on the towels, so it didn't spill much, which is good. That's another reason why it's good to have a towel down or a paper towel. Just makes your cleanup a lot easier when you can't see what you're doing. So, all right, I'll be back in around half an hour and we'll give our rice a, uh, the are you done test and we'll see if it's done or not. So for those of you who have stuck around for the last 19 or so minutes, we are at the finish line and hopefully our rice pudding has turned out the way it is supposed to turn out. So I'm gonna pull it out of the oven. I'm gonna turn the oven off. I'm going to pull it out of the oven and then I'll do the fork test, which will tell me if it's done or not. I guess I should have left the oven on before um, until after I checked if this was done or not, 
but I think it is. I'm confident. Okay, so make sure our oven is off. It is. So I just gonna use my fingers to just feel what it looks like, what it feels like. It feels good. It smells good. Um, we have a fork somewhere around here. We had a fork. Where did our fork go? Boy, we lost a fork, so we'll get a we'll get another fork out here. It's probably right under my nose somewhere, but whatever. We'll use this guy. So you're gonna stick your fork in, pull it out. If there's rice on the fork, yeah, this looks pretty good. So basically, when you pull your fork out, it's okay if there's a little bit of rice on there. Like you, you, you can kind of tell by moving your fork around. If there's a lot of liquid or not, you don't want liquid. You want um, you, you want it to be kind of congealed. Congealed. This is congealed. As you can see, when I pull my fork out, for those of you who, who can see, there is rice on the fork. So that's a good sign. So I think this is done. I'm gonna actually try some for for you guys. Let's mix it up a bit. There's a lot of rice pudding here, probably a couple of days worth for Colleen and I. Um, let's give it a try. It's a little hot, so we'll, we'll try some from the edges, because the edges are not as hot as the middle. Yep, it's pretty good. Pretty good indeed. So, there you go guys. That is how I make rice pudding. There are many different recipes. There is stovetop recipes and there are baking recipes and everything in between. So um, this is a simple recipe. Um, it's very, as long as you cook the rice properly, it's pretty difficult to mess this recipe up, which is one of the reasons why I like it so much. Um, and yeah, you can add a bunch of stuff as well. Raisins, chocolate chips, dried fruit, anything that you want to add to make it more um, interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Cheers.